February is Career and Technical Education Month. Each year, career and technical education programs in the U.S. empower more than 12.5 million students with academic and real-world skills. In the school zone today, we're taking a closer look at another one of these programs. According to the Department of Education, 77% of all, high, all public high school students nationwide complete at least one career and technical education course by the end of their senior year. Many of these students also belong to a career and technical student organization. And today we're introducing you to Future Business Leaders of America. This organization has more than 230,000 members and works to prepare students to become community-minded business leaders in a global society. Joining us today, FBLA High School National President Deborah Jacklin. Uh, Deborah, first off, congratulations on what I'm sure has been an incredible year. For the audience watching, tell us a little more about FBLA and what inspired you to join. Of course, so FBLA stands for Future Business Leaders of America. It is one of eight career and technical student organizations that are actually recognized by Congress by the Carl D. Perkins Grant. So I joined FBLA probably in about sixth grade, actually. And to be quite honest with you, I had no idea what um, FBLA necessarily stood for or why necessarily I was joining, except that all of my friends were joining. But I have been so incredibly thankful with my experience in the last seven years with FBLA. I have learned so many um, business skills, um, soft skills from even something as simple as writing a resume or um, sending an email or sending a business letter. All of those skills are something that you learn through FBLA. We also have competitive events. Um, that we all compete at at the National Leadership Conference um, in June and July. And there are, I believe, about over 70 competitive events that um, members can compete in. And they range from anything from political science to agribusiness to network design. So in FBLA, there really is something for everybody involved. And Deborah, I was a former FBLA chapter president and our producer in the control room used to be an FBLA parent who has been a Georgia conference chaperone. So you have a very friendly audience here. We know every year FBLA members dedicate thousands of hours to community service. And last year, I saw that one of your top projects came out of Texas, where Tompkins High School FBLA tackled a food desert in their community. Real quickly, what more can you share about that project? Yeah, so every year at the National Leadership Conference, we have a competitive event called the Community Service Project. So members will do a community service project in their local area and um, prepare it and bring a presentation to the National Leadership Conference. So the school in Kil the school, um, Thompson School, um, went to or kind of talked to residents in the Kendleton, Texas area. And in this place, they recognized that there was actually a food desert, meaning that there were um, there was not a grocery store that was fully stocked within 17 miles of this area. And they recognized that there were a lot of senior citizens in this area who just weren't able to really make that drive all the way to go 17 miles away just to get food. So these um, FBLA members, they tried to raise um, a lot of food donations and they ended up getting about 7,000 pounds of food. Wow, just one of the many um, examples of the great work FBLA is doing. Hey, Deborah, as we wrap things up, I want to mention to the audience that you're one of the few Asian Americans to ever serve as the national president of one of our country's CTSOs. I'm also a former CTSO national officer myself. I know it's a lot of work traveling the country, yeah. delivering keynotes, presenting workshops, balancing school, all of your other responsibilities. Uh, so real quickly, on a personal note, how meaningful has this experience been for you? Yeah, of course. It's just definitely been so meaningful. I was actually born in South Korea, so um, English was not my first language. So just being able to, I guess, learn public speaking skills, getting over my fear of public speaking, um, I think has been very meaningful for me, not just because um, public speaking, I guess, can be scary in general, but also because English wasn't my sec or first language. We have a lot of similarities. Vietnamese was my first language, and public speaking was actually the first competition that I competed in through the FBLA Competitive Events Program. Uh, Deborah, congratulations oh, wow. again on all of your achievements, and we can't wait to see what the future has in store for you. Deborah Jacklin, FBLA High School National President from Georgia. Deborah, we'll see you soon, and have a great rest of your year.